Welcome to this targeted oncology presentation in precision medicine called FGFR inhibition, a novel therapeutic strategy. I am Dr. Richard Kim, a medical oncologist at Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. Targeted therapies have really come to the forefront of treatment of cancer. Today, we're going to talk about an important emerging therapeutic class that has shown great promise among several advanced malignancy called FGFR inhibitors. These agents represent a paradigm-changing advance in precision oncology and drug development for FG, FGFR mutation-driven cancers. I am here with my colleague, Dr. Roshna Shroff, a medical oncologist at the University of Arizona Cancer Center in Tucson, Arizona. Welcome, Dr. Shroff. Thank you. Dr. Shroff and I will be talking about cholangiac carcinoma. Later on, Dr. Powell will talk about FGFR inhibitors in bladder cancer. And let's get started. So before we delve into the role of FGF and FGFR in tumor or in cholangiac carcinoma, can you just describe us what the role it plays in a normal cell regulation? Absolutely. So the fibroblast, fibroblast growth factor receptor pathway is a very complex signaling cascade that involves multiple downstream kinases that get activated through phosphorylation with attachment of the FGF, uh, FGF ligand to the receptor. And what we know is, is that in normal functioning cells, this plays an important role in cellular proliferation and differentiation. Uh, there's actually a role in uh, early stage uh, embryo embryonic differentiation. And then there's a, a huge interplay between other angiogenic pathways. So FGFR interacts with the VEGF pathway, uh, as well as another, a number of other anti and angiogenic pathways to help with uh, growth and promotion of uh, angiogenesis. So fibroblast growth factor receptor plays a pretty important role across a number of different disease types in oncology. Uh, I would say that the principal role in bladder cancer is in the pathogenesis and progression of the disease. We actually see different levels of fibroblast growth factor across different stages. And there seems to be some downward migration in the rate of mutations and alterations as you go from localized to advanced bladder cancer. So the fibroblast growth factor receptor actually works downstream through PI3K AKT signaling, through the MAP kinase pathway, and a number of other elements to trigger cancer progression. So when it comes to bladder cancer, it seems as though FGFR3 plays a particularly important role. We see a relatively high rate of mutations and fusions. I've done quite a bit of work with Foundation Medicine, and through my work with them, we actually published one of the largest series in advanced bladder cancer to date, around 300 patients. We identified that about 20% of patients have mutations in FGFR3. Mutations, fusions, both of these seem to trigger the same downstream cascades. One thing I will point out is upper tract bladder cancer, which is a particularly aggressive subtype, seems to harbor a much higher rate of alteration, something in the ballpark of 50 to 70%. So currently there are four receptors that have been identified. So in your opinion, are they all equally important in terms of, of the treatment of the cancer? Yeah, you know, there's been a number of uh, studies looking at the role of FGFR 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what's interesting is that these different receptors are uh, differentially important in various cancers. So when we talk about specific GI malignancies, FGFR 2 seems to play an important role. FGFR3 plays a role in urothelial malignancies. And so I think they all play an important role when with disruption of that cascade leading to uh, promotion of, can of carcinogenesis, but I don't necessarily think it's the same receptor for every cancer. Sure. So the, the FGFR aberration also it, it, you know, differs depending on the types of tumor you have. Probably the most common FGFR aberration that we see are probably amplification, uh, mutation, and the third is probably fusion or a translocation. Those are the most common. So in cholangiac carcinoma, we know that the fusion occurs maybe about 15 to 20% 20, uh, 20 of the time. So in, also in other tumors, uh, can you tell us a little bit the incidence of the other FGFR aberration that we see in other types of tumors than, than cholangiac carcinoma? Yeah, so the uh, amplification, for instance, in things like gastric cancer or, or upper GI malignancies, we see FGFR amplification, as you mentioned, and those are actually more rare events. Uh, we see them you know, anywhere from about 10% or so of uh, gastric cancer. Uh, it's a rare event in pancreatic cancer, for instance. Uh, but the fusions, FGFR fusions in cholangial carcinoma, we see them in, like I mentioned, urothelial cancer. Those all seem to be around the range of 15 to 20%. 
And the role of HFR4 amplification, uh, there is some data, at least in, in ACC, that the uh, overexpression of HFR4 plays a role in ATC, but not in much in cholangiocarcinoma.